Hello everybody, uh, this is Chris Johnson here again. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, of course my first video uh, in this series that I'm going to be doing on a book review of this book right here. This is entitled, common or, excuse me, A Return to Common Sense, Reawakening Liberty in the Inhabitants of America. Okay. Uh, the reason I am reviewing this book, I need to get into this for just a moment. The author, the author of this book, his name is Thomas Mullins, and I believe he released this book sometime in early first quarter of 2009. <clears throat> um, the reason I got into this was because Thomas Mullins, after he had released the book, um, on a website called BreakTheMatrix.com, I had been posting some articles, things like that. He started posting some articles uh, that were basically it was kind of in promotion of his book which I'm not I'm not against that's a good idea how to how to promote your book write some articles that have similar ideas and say if you want more read this book which is what he was doing so he posted some ideas uh, things that he had written about um, and I found an awful lot of logical flaw in those which I was commenting to at one point a couple months ago he had written something else concerning natural law and I had commented uh, roughly saying that you know this is wrong and what you're saying and I said I suspect your book even though I've never read it I suspect your book is probably the same way I said which I would you know I'm more than happy to read it read other people's material I said I probably just won't read it because I would never pay for that junk was roughly what I said um, he had responded and I'd like to read just I have a quote here from a he sent me a private message on that website and uh, I, I normally don't like to share people's private messages but what he wrote here was I was uh, very uh, you know, complimented to receive it. Um, and what he wrote here was good. He said, give me a shipping address and I'll send you a review copy. He says, I'm getting bombed with emails, you know, put your sub subject line down properly, blah, blah, blah. And he says, I'm getting nothing but mindless praise so I could use some intelligent adversal criticism. Well, I have to say, and especially say to Tom, that is probably the most open response uh, to information I have received since I, I started writing and putting things online at all. Uh, most people, I, I just get violently attacked every time I, you know, post something of the research that I'm doing. So uh, I appreciate Tom Mullins in that. A couple things I want to say first before we get started in this book. I would have to say that Tom Mullins is probably a very intelligent man. He's probably uh, he's probably got a good personality. He's probably a very fun guy uh, to talk to. Uh, and I have to give him credit when I'm reading his book. This guy, he definitely. Um, you can definitely tell he has a degree uh, on the back here. It says master's degree in English at State University of New York College in Buffalo. You can definitely tell he has his master's degree in English because he knows how to structure a sentence. This guy uh, is probably one of the best I have seen on structuring a sentence to keep the reader interested as you're going through each chapter. Uh, but I do also have to say this. Being able to structure a sentence and having a master's degree and being a really fun guy and a great personality and being intelligent has none of those have anything to do with truth. The truth is separate from all that. So I am, as I've stated in my introductory video, I am for truth and against error. So we're going to go through and point out the error. I will compliment you on what you have right, Tom, but I am going to have to uh, scold you on what you have wrong. And I hope that you'll at least be able to be willing to correct these. As I go through this, I'll have to say that I do not think on the parts that are wrong about this, I don't think Tom is lying. At least I certainly hope not. When you when you make a statement, there are only three options. Well, there's two options first. You're either right about that statement or you're wrong about that statement. If you are wrong, there's two more options. Either you're ignorant, that you don't know that you're saying the wrong thing, or you're lying about it on purpose, that you do know that you're saying the wrong thing. So either you do know or you don't know. I would, I'm, I'm going to lean to the side and say that Tom probably did not know a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. I hope certainly that he will be willing to correct them. I really don't want to have to say that he's lying about it. I, I, I'm going to stick on the side and say that he's probably just ignorant. He does not know. And that's perfectly fine. Ignorance can be fixed. But stupid is forever. So and lying would be stupid. And I certainly hope that's not the case. I don't believe it is here. So the first thing that we'll go through, in chapter one, he asks the question, he titles this, he says, what is freedom? Okay, and then he quotes first from uh, Frederick Bastier. I believe that's how you pronounce his name, Frederick Bastier. He wrote a pamphlet in uh, 1850, I believe, uh, called The Law. Very interesting pamphlet. This is something, it's about 60 pages long. I spent probably two to three weeks just reading this 60-page pamphlet and studying it. 
it was that intense. Frederick Bastry, a very brilliant man, a uh, very wise man in my opinion, and I think people, anybody who studies the subject of liberty should pick up the law and read it. And he is quoting here um, from that book, The Law. Uh, I recognized it immediately as I saw it. I was like, that's definitely from his pamphlet. It says, and what is this liberty whose very name makes the heart beat faster and shakes the world? Now, the one thing I have to criticize uh, Thomas Mullins on here is that he is asking the question, what is freedom? And continually uh, states, it is freedom. Uh, what is freedom? What is it that our soldiers die for? Uh, we are to lose our freedom. He says this over and over throughout the chapter. But yet when he quotes, and he will reference back to Frederick Bastier's quote here, Frederick Bastier is referring to liberty. Well, Thomas Mullins keeps using them interchangeably. First of all, this is probably the incorrect thing to do. Uh, I wrote an article. I really don't think we're going to have time in this segment to go over this. I would have to create a completely different video series on what is the difference between freedom and liberty. The, the difference is quite shocking. And it really has to do liberty. Uh, well, I really shouldn't go down that rabbit trail. We'll, we'll save that for another time. But I would encourage anybody, the most up-to-date article I have would be at BreakTheMatrix.com right now. Uh, my website, CreationLiberty.org, this week of, uh, what is today's date? This is November 22nd. This week my website's going to be down. Um, but the, uh, let's see here. If you go on, on to BreakTheMatrix.com, search for an article that's entitled, Revealing Liberty, a Defining Line in the Sand. If you'll look up that article and read through it carefully, even if you don't you know, want to believe there's anything in it, that's fine, just read through it. And look at the differences. When you look up the definitions of liberty and freedom, they are total opposites. If you take, for example, that somebody in a, in a communist nation, citizens of a communist nation have freedom, but they don't have liberty. There's a big difference, okay? And he's using these interchangeably. It's kind of a, it's almost, I would say, a bait and switch tactic. This is much similar to how um, atheists will use the term evolution. They'll say, well, don't you believe in evolution? Well, evolution has many different meanings. So what do you mean when you say evolution? You know, uh, we won't get into the details of all that, but that's basically what they're doing. It's a bait and switch thing. That's like if I were advertising that I had a, you know, brand new car, new Mercedes, ten dollars. Come on down and buy it. Well, you're like in a hurry. You rush over. Hey, here's my ten dollars. I want to buy that Mercedes. Once you get in, I say, well, no, actually, we changed the price to ninety-nine thousand. In this country, that's illegal. You cannot bait and switch people like that. You can get sued for doing that. Uh, but these same bait and switch tactics are often used uh, in books, and why people are allowed to publish this stuff or teach this stuff, I have no idea. But liberty and freedom do not mean the same thing. And certainly, whenever I talk about anything that is based on liberty, I definitely like to use the biblical term, liberty, uh, which is where it originally comes from. So, uh, let's go to the beginning. So, here, I need to look at my notes, okay? Um, mentioning freedom, using it interchangeably. Uh, let's go on into, uh, and, and there's there's a couple parts in here. I have to, you know, kind of, you know, pick this dog as we go by it. Um, he talks about, and Thomas Jefferson even here, uh, it, often extolling the virtue of majority rule. There's a there's a part where he talks about this. The reason I bring this up is because there's an awful lot of places in here where Thomas Mullins will quote a person, but one you have to question if the the when the quote, when you read it carefully, does not really apply to what he's talking about. When he when he set, makes this a very strong statement like this, and, the, and the, the quote itself doesn't talk anything about it, he says that Thomas Jefferson often extolled the virtue of majority rule. Then he quotes Thomas Jefferson. He says, The majority, oppressing an individual, is guilty of a crime, abuses its strength, and by acting on the law of the strongest, breaks up the foundations of society. Okay, Which I agree with. He's right about that. But this in no way extols uh, a virtue in majority rule. Thomas Mullins didn't do this. Extolling, for anybody who doesn't know what extol means, to extol something means to give it praise. He does not give praise to the virtue, virtue of majority rule. In fact, if you look at, at Thomas Jefferson's um, he is, uh, what is it, first inaugural address, I think in 1801. 